This is Diberethwin Arbenloh. I am bringing you tutorial number four, which is painting shadows onto photos for Second Life. This will also work for photos that were not taken in Second Life, but it, this tutorial is geared towards the Second Life photography. So, someone might ask, but when? Why would I paint shadows when I can use wind light to create shadows for me? And to that I will give you Exhibit A. Now I realize this is a bit extreme and proponents of wind light will tell me, but when you can change your wind light settings to make them beautiful, but it's very difficult to really get the right wind light. You'll sit, I have spent hours and hours and hours trying to get just the perfect wind light for, especially for Second Life heads, because the polygons on the mesh are just a little too extreme and then you've got the seams going on so you can see here I've got a seam for my Maitreya mesh body to my second life head I've got a seam for my mesh lips I've got all these unattractive shadows and also the clarity of my skin just isn't there and you can do some crazy settings to make really beautiful shadows but sometimes you just want to have a nice clean clear photo so the difference is staggering this more attractive no shadow photo we can paint shadows on to create some depth so that's what we're gonna do um, if you do not know how to create a no shadow photo I do teach that in my tutorial on doing close-up portraits so you can take a look at that if you are unfamiliar we're also going to remove this background if you have not seen my oh, I don't have my tolerance high enough if you do not have if you have not seen my tutorial on how to remove green screen uh, you can also check that out. So we're going to remove the green from this photo. It should remove most of it. And then we're just going to add a white background. So I've created a new layer. Down here you've got a create a new layer button. And I'm going to change my color swatch to white. I'm going to fill it with a white and just put it behind. I have a little bit of green left but I'm not real worried about it because I I'm not going to actually use this photo, so I'll just change this just a tad, just to make it a little more palatable. Okay, so we have a photo that is beautiful but doesn't have a lot of depth, so we want to add some shadows to it. So I'm going to first add a new layer, and then I'm going to create a clipping mask so that my shadows don't go all over the place. So you're going to take your new layer and you're going to right click and create a clipping mask. So this clips your uh, layer to your avatar's photo. What clipping does is if I take a brush and I can add whatever I want to the layer and it won't go beyond the boundaries of the photo that's below it that it's clipped to. So this means that I can reduce the possibility that I'm going to have some crappy haze because let's say I don't clip this let's release this clipping mask now it's all over the place it's not clean I'd have to clean up all these edges myself so we don't want to do that we want to create the clipping mask and actually we want to get rid of all those lines because that's ugly <laughs> okay so you need to choose a brush so we're going to just have a soft brush so here, one of my default brushes is soft round, and that's great. We'll use that. So we want to have the hardness at 0%. Sometimes hardness is a good thing, but this time we're talking about brushes. I'll just let that joke sink in. Okay, so <laughs> hardness is at 0%, and that's what we want. Hardness at a higher percent means that you start having hard edges. And for shadows, we want to have nice soft edges. So your size will depend on the size of your photo. This is a nice approximate size for me and we are happy with that so let's go back to our photo I have my color set to black and my opacity is set to 100 I will change the opacity in my layer rather than changing the opacity on my brush because if I want to add more shadows as long as my opacity is at 100 percent I won't end up with multiple like they won't overlap so if I let's let me show you an example so if I have my opacity at 52 and then I want to add another shadow to it, you can see this area here where they layer on top of each other, it gets too dark and then it doesn't look natural. But if I have my opacity at 100% and 
and I add a shadow, and then I add a shadow. There's no overlap. Even if I reduce the opacity, you don't see where they connect. So always keep your um, opacity at 100% on the brush itself, and then reduce the opacity in the layer instead for shadows. Okay, so we're just going to paint a shadow under the jaw in this case. So let's paint a under jaw shadow. So you sort of want to follow along. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just follow along the chin. And then you're going to come down a little bit. We want to have it look like there's an actual shadow that's showing me the chin line. So you just kind of follow the shape of your chin and let it loop down. So now it kind of looks like I have a beard. We don't really want a beard. So we're going to reduce the opacity. And now you see I have a 5 o'clock shadow still, and we don't want that either. So we're going to zoom in, and we're just going to clean up the shadow. And we're going to zoom in to 100%. Okay, so I've got this beard that I don't want, so I'm going to go back to my regular eraser tool. I'm going to set my setting maybe around 40%, so I don't have any uh, over... I don't want to over erase my shadows. So I'm going to start erasing this extra shadow. I don't need all that. You don't have to erase it all. Sometimes a little bit of shadow, like at the edge, will look nice. But you want to erase it enough that it doesn't look like a like you have a beard. That's the the easy way to make mistakes is you accidentally make it look like you have a five o'clock shadow going on. So we've carefully just sort of removed a lot of this extra shadow. And now we can go back and view it at full. And maybe you want to clean up a little bit more shadows. Maybe you want to change the shape a little bit to make it look a little bit more like you have your chin showing. And this just takes some practice trying to get the shadows right. You want to, may want to change your opacity up and down. Sometimes you want to take more, sometimes you want to take less. Maybe I want to take a little bit less. So you create this sort of effect that looks like I have a shadow where I don't have a shadow. And you sometimes you will do a lot of cleaning up of shadows, but the end result is something that looks pretty natural with depth. Now, I create different layers for the different areas of shadow. The reason that I do that is because I want to have control over the opacity on every area. So if I want to put shadows in other places than my lower jawline, I'm going to create a new layer for that shadow so that I do not have um, the inability to change settings based per shadow area. So if I want to change my jawline and I want to change my forehead line, I want to be able to do that simultaneous, simultaneously without affecting the other area. So I'm creating a new also clipped layer. So make sure that everything has this little arrow, this clipping arrow, down to your layer zero or whatever the name of your base layer is. So I'm going to create a shadow here now. Let's create this shadow. We have our opacity. Oh, I need to... We have a brush with opacity at 100%. So we're just going to paint along the line of the face. So let's just paint along. We'll paint down here. You can go as short or as long as you want. You know, you may just want to do just this area. You pull it over here. And you're going to do a lot of cleaning of the edges of your shadows, but the end result will be worth it. Alright, so this is a little bit too much shadow, right? So we want to, let's zoom into 100% and clean up the shadows around the face. Too much shadow, so we're going to clean this up. You may think when you're done that you've erased most of the shadows that you had in the area, but you'll be surprised to see what a difference it still makes even after you've erased quite a bit of it. So we're going to erase all this these hard lines that make it look unnatural. So it kind of looks like I've erased like all of my shadow, but actually there's still a lot there that you just can't really see. And you'll be cleaning, 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 cleaning it up. Okay. Maybe you want to clean a little bit more of this and clean it all up. Okay. So we have fit on screen. Now we have two areas of shadows. 
you can create shadows in lots of places, but I would suggest in every place that you do it, you create a new layer so that you have more control over the area that you've created shadows for. And you always make your shadows at 100% opacity. So let's add a little shadow under here where we've got our hand. So we'll create a shadow as if the hand had a shadow on the hair. We're going to make the shadow go down here. Maybe an elbow has a little shadow. Basically, wherever you feel like light would actually fall, you can create the shadow. And we'll reduce the opacity until it looks natural to us. Always err on the side of caution. So if you are in doubt, just reduce the opacity of it. Because even at a really low percent, it's still going to make a pretty big difference. Let's say I reduce this all the way there. Let's reduce it to 10%. There hardly looks like there's a shadow there, right? But there really is. And even though it doesn't make a huge impact at that percentage, you can still see it adding depth to the photo. But this one we actually do want to have a little bit higher. So now I've got some shadow going on here. You can erase it if you think you can erase it in sections. Maybe we want a little less shadow. And we've created a lot of depth. Let's add some shadows to the rest of the hair. Opacity for my brush is at 100%. And we're going to add some shadows here on my truth hair. This is, incidentally, this is a VCO skin Benny, uh, the VCO lip for Benny. This is truth hair amorette, and this is a uh, rare gotcha dress from Cureless and Moon uh, Moonamore from the arcade. December. All right, so I'm adding, I'm adding shadows. You just kind of follow the curves, right? So you see where there's curves, and you can kind of just follow them along. And you're going to do lots of cleaning of the areas that you add shadows to, because sometimes it's just too much. So we'll add some shadow, add a little shadow. You don't have to do it clean. You can just sort of haphazardly do it and then go and clean it up afterwards with your eraser. So I added too much shadow here, I have shadow here I don't want. You can just sort of look and see where it is. So I have this opacity at 24%, but look how much depth it's adding. So much difference. Add shadows up here, um, and you can do the same thing with highlights too, but highlights are a little bit more difficult to make look natural in my opinion. So let's create another layer and let's do something, actually let's do one that's not clipped. Let's unclip this, at least the clipping mask. So maybe I want to make an extreme shadow effect like I'm standing in a light. I did a pileup of Oakley Foxtrot where I put her into um, shadows like as if she was standing in the way of an open door. So you can do that on your photo as well. So let's let's just take like a triangle and obviously this would look more natural if I was doing it on uh, on a real background not on a white background but that's okay I'm just gonna fill this in to be fast and then finish okay so we're gonna paint this so we're just gonna pretend like this is a shadow that's falling over the face Painting it at 100%, just like we always do with our shadows. And you'll notice these soft lines are preventing hard edges from occurring. Okay, so we've painted over this, and it looks weird, but we're going to reduce the opacity until it starts to look like a real shadow. So if I had a different kind of background, let me just move this up a little, it kind of looks like she's in the way of some long shadow. So you can do a lot of types of things with shadows without using wind light and maintaining the integrity because if I was the creator of this skin I probably would rather see this rather than this. Just saying. So this is sort of a quick and easy way to do shadows and it's going to take a little bit of practice if you're not used to doing this but it's not as difficult as it sounds. When I first started I thought I would never be painting shadows. It sounded like something that was way too difficult but really all it is is about having a good eye for when you've 
put too much shadow in and knowing how to clean up your lines. So now you do and now you can add shadows. So this is the end of the tutorial. Thank you for joining me. Uh, if you have any suggestions for things that you would like to see in the future, you can leave a comment on the YouTube video, you can send me a message in World, or you can leave me a comment on Plurk. There's lots of places that you can tell me what you'd like to see from me. And I will catch you on the flip side. Thank you.